I'm Teresa Scanlon, Miss America 2011. What a privilege, Teresa Scanlon, Glenn Hodges here with Miss America. Uh, Teresa, what are your principles of success? Well, I think they might be somewhat similar to a lot of what we've heard today at the conference. Um, one thing is personal growth, and I think that anyone who's been successful can tell you that. Uh, continually growing as a person and always investing in yourself is incredibly important for success. Um, also for me, planning and having goals is incredibly important. You have to have an idea of where you're going and a direction in order to then move forward. And so I've always been a person who writes out goals, has everything written down, and is very intentional about the direction I want my life to lead. And I, I think that in many ways that's been very helpful. Has any of that changed since you became uh, associated with the John Maxwell team? You know, I wouldn't say that anything fundamentally changed. Rather, it helped define what I was already doing. And it, it really confirmed to me that the way that uh, the th some of the things that I was doing was very fulfilling to my life purpose. Being a part of the John Maxwell team, I think for all of us, helps us realize we're part of something bigger than ourselves. And that's what I've loved about this experience. And it's helped encourage me to continue in the in the projects and the goals that I already have set for myself and for my family and has made that all the more possible. It's fun talking about achievements, accomplishments and how we do it, Teresa, but you know, sometimes things just don't go quite like we want them to. It's that thing we call adversity. Mm -hmm. What do you do when Mr. Adversity shows up in your life? Well, goodness knows we've all had plenty of adversity and obstacles we've had to face in our life. Um, and I'm no exception, especially recently. And I realize that you have to, again, be very conscious and intentional about having a plan to move through that. There's nothing wrong with facing adversity. There's nothing wrong with being in a valley. Those are incredibly important times in our life. But I think the main thing first is to change your attitude so that it's an idea of passing through and pushing through rather than I'm stuck. Um, so practically, I have a couple things that I've realized help a lot. One is having a mentor. One is having a coach. Uh, surrounding yourself with those people that will continue to help change your mindset and your perspective. I think along those same lines, kind of analyzing who you're surrounded by, what circumstances you're surrounded by, and doing what you can to change that so that it is positive and uplifting constantly. Because when you're facing a difficult situation and when you're facing adversity, you can feel very overwhelmed by it. So I think one of the most important things is to have that daily encouragement, that daily support system that helps you move through it. No doubt about it. You know, you, you mentioned attitude. I think of my one of my earlier mentors, the great Zig Ziglar. Mm. Attitude determines yes. altitude. Yep. Uh, happiness. You seem like a very happy person. What is your definition of happiness? I, honestly, I think my definition of happiness goes along the same lines as my definition of success. I tend to go along with Earl Nightingale's definition, which is the worthy the I, sorry the the successful pursuit of a worthy goal. So you're following a worthy ideal. You have a a goal and an ideal that your life is following, and as long as you're pursuing that, it's not necessarily the achievement of anything, but it's the journey and the growth toward that ideal or toward that goal that really to me defines success and happiness along the way. I think when you are doing something fulfilling that's impacting lives, that is fulfilling your own life, um, that makes all the difference in the world. And it, it can be easy to forget that sometimes. Uh, so much life can happen and it changes your perspective. But if you kind of take the time to step back and refocus at the, the big picture, take a look at the big picture and realize that as long as you're taking one step one foot in front of the other each day toward that worthy ideal, uh, then you can be continuing to have happiness and success in your own life. We've got a lot of teenagers that'll probably be looking at this video. Anytime Miss America is interviewed, it, it attracts a lot of people. So for the young girls that are modeling, I mean, you know, this is like Barbie doll here. <laughs> I mean, Miss Perfect. What have you got to say about to those young girls? Because Everyone can't be as beautiful as you are and have an absolutely perfect figure. So oh what gosh. do you say to those young girls? Uh, 
Uh, no, first of all, there's no such thing as perfect. And then, as I said earlier today, I don't wake up like this. Uh, makeup does amazing things. You can learn all sorts of tips and tricks to make yourself look any way you want to look. It is, it is not the appearance that matters. I, I thought that when I won Miss America, I would feel so confident and that somehow I'd wake up in the morning and just be so happy and realize that I'm, you know, the most beautiful woman in the world. That doesn't happen. You win Miss America and you wake up the next day and you feel exactly the same as you did the day before. You look in the mirror and you see that same face looking back at you. So if you don't like yourself the way you are now, being Miss America doesn't change that. Changing the way you look doesn't change that. Um, those things can change, but you have to have a proper attitude about yourself first and foremost. And if you if, if you can't embrace the flaws and imperfections and are always striving toward uh, this unrealistic standard of perfection, you're never gonna be happy. I mean, you say, okay, uh, you know that I'm beautiful and look great but you know what if I don't have that view of myself I'll still go out there and compare myself to every other woman to every other model to every other Miss America I'll continue to play that comparison game if I don't have a healthy view of myself well in closing what one lesson of John Maxwell's means the most to you Goodness, I think that oh, it's hard to narrow it down to one. One of my favorite things that he's ever said is that a true leader takes more blame than he deserves and takes less credit than he deserves. And when it all boils down to it, I think that's my definition of a leader and what I try to do in my own life. And I think that when you start to adopt that practice, not caring who gets the credit for something, not caring if people blame you unfairly, you get a lot more done and have a healthier, more realistic view of yourself too. Thank you so much, folks. This is Glenn Hodges saying goodbye, and thank you so much for blessing me thank today. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.